Yeah, what I think your question is. Let okay. me see if I get I, it right. I wanted to follow up on this slide for you, because last month we did say that you'd be willing to testify before an outside commission. Now that there is a uh, I think would you be open to talk about your conversation with Donald Trump to a select committee? Well, I don't know that there is a select committee. The speaker's never talked to me about it. She hasn't set the well, scope. She didn't tell me about it. I haven't seen anything. So I don't, I don't know what it is. I, don't, I haven't seen one thing voted on. I'll wait to I review what that is. The question that you're referring to asked if I would talk to anybody. I have no problem talking to anybody about it. I don't know what the conversations that day would matter as, the, as that's going on. What I think would really matter, especially if you read the report that bipartisan in the Senate has already done from two committees, is the lack of taking knowledge that they had prior. And what did they do with that? That's what's caused a lot of the damage to this Capitol, that they had knowledge ahead of time. If the people in the parking structure knew, why didn't the Capitol Police know? If the intelligence had it, why didn't they pass it on? They didn't have the training. They didn't have the gear there for them. They didn't produce and warn people ahead of time. There is failure after failure. Why were there National Guards, a couple hundred, or about 160-some, but no weapons, patrolling the streets only from street signs, but not on the Capitol. Did someone deny the right of that coming from days before? Because they had meetings about it. Those are things that I think have to be answered. Some of that's answered in here, but I think it has to be fully answered. Um, that is the only way you'll stop from happening what happened before. And for the idea, um, the speaker prior saying that the scope should be so narrow. We have an officer who gave his life on Good Friday. If you drive in the Capitol, you see his portrait. But we can't look at what caused that, because that was political as well. Or what built up to this? Because I know in the 9-11 Commission, we looked at what built up all that time before September 11th. We watched what happened in the last summer. Did what happened in Washington, D.C. during the summer make somebody make a decision not to have the National Guard here to protect this building? That's a question that should be answered. Hey, congratulations on having Melanie join you. How's that going to work? Will you guys... Tag team? All right. Help him with his questions. That was the best question he's had yet. Yes, sir. I like the color of your hair. Thank you. <laughs> it's distinguishing. Yep. How um, old were you when you first went gray? I was in my 20s. Later than that. Okay. <laughs> um, Are you older than me? No, you're older than me. About okay. four or five years. Okay. <laughs> All right, last Do you Wednesday, know my birthday? 21, <laughs> I'm sorry. Last Wednesday, 21 Republicans voted against giving the gold medal to the Capitol Police. That same day... Uh, Congressman Gosar accused the Capitol Police officer of lying in wait in order to execute one of the rioters here. The next day, 14 House Republicans voted against making Juneteenth a national holiday, and the week ended with Congressman Gohmert on the House floor suggesting that secret FBI agents were part of the January 6th crowd who probably helped egged on those rioters. Have any of those people in your conference received any type of stern lecture, any wording, anything about their behavior, given your self-proclaimed need for unity within the conference? Well, what I talk to my members is what I talk to my members personally about. But if you want to talk to somebody about how they vote, talk to them. Both those votes are not, vo are not names that I was a part of. Uh, I voted for Juneteenth. I voted for the medal. And uh, from all aspects, it would raise the question, too, from a scope of um, if Speaker Pelosi wants to do a select committee, why, should, why wouldn't she look at that officer that got killed and provided a medal to him as well? Isn't his life just as value as the others? The yes, speaker, sir. Peter, I just want to ask you about H.R. 18 and uh, the conscious effort on the House floor to bring it every day uh, to talk days. about this. Uh, and, and what well, message do you want? Well, what we're talking about is the Hyde Amendment. Regardless of what position you have when it comes to abortion, what has been the law of the land since 1976 was we do not use taxpayer funding for it. Overwhelmingly supported by Americans regardless of the issue, especially independents. 
every single person in Congress, I think probably outside of Don Young, have voted for the Hyde Amendment, Republican or Democrat. As the Democrats have now taken over the majority, they now want to change the course. I think if you go back and you look at the quotes as then Senator Biden, he was a strong supporter of the Hyde Amendment. He's had more than 30 years of service. I don't think he'd want to change his 30 years of voting in support of the Hyde Amendment. But apparently the Democrats want to change that, want to use taxpayer money, something that I think was one of the most bipartisan points that we have made. Um, so for the next 18 days, we will ask to bring up Chris Smith's bill with unanimous consent. And we've watched those who sit in the Speaker's chambers say, no, it's not agreed to on both sides. And I will tell them from a Republican side, we have no objections. They can bring it up.